Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you, hallelujah. If you have your Bible, please open it to Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, that's the first book of the Bible. Genesis means beginning, Genesis, the genesis of something, the beginning of the stuff. Genesis chapter 2, let's read verse 18 to verse 24, hallelujah. Verse 18 to verse 24, hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 to 24, I read. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should... That man should be alone. I will make him a help, a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. So Adam gave names to, to all cattle, to the birds of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... There was not found a helper comparable to him. Comparable. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept. And God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, he made into a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones. And flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. They shall become one flesh. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 24 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Hallelujah. They shall become one flesh. I want to concentrate on verse 24 to bring you a message title. Well, I'm preaching a series of sermon on marriage now. Marriage, this one is marriage 101. So you need to look for marriage 100. And now this one is marriage 101. A man and his wife. A man and his wife. Hallelujah. A man and his wife. If you look at many couples, you look at what transpire in many couples, you wonder if this institution of marriage is really created by God. When you see the result that couples are producing, the result that marriages are producing, you begin to doubt that this marriage situation came from God. But it is. It came from God because God started it in, in Genesis. Like I said, Genesis is the beginning. God started in the Genesis. Our first parent, Adam and Eve. That's the first marriage we can say like that. And between Adam and Eve. God instituted Institute a marriage. But how come that there are so many problems these days? You know, statistics say that 67% of marriages end up in divorce. And those who even remain, those who even re remain, the 33%, they say most of them, they are tired of their marriages. In other words, People end up in divorce, more than half of people who got married, more than half, more than 50%, 67%, 59%, 71%, those are different statistics of divorces that have been revealed to us. And more than half, and those who will remain together, most of them, when they ask them, will you marry again this same person most of them will not honestly say they would. They will say no, they don't want to. If they can say it honestly. Of course, they are intimidated that their spouse might, might know the answer that, oh, he doesn't want me anymore, she doesn't want me anymore. But when they can hide their, their result, when they ask most people who are married, most, most of them are no longer interested in being with the person they are with. 
You know the words, many marriages end up in divorce. You know the words, those marriages who are even together, most of them are not happy. Most people are not happy in their marriages. And you are wondering, how come? When God is the one who instituted this marriage, this institution, God instituted it. God started it. How come? The divine institution is not working. If you're not careful, you begin to wonder that maybe the way God has made marriage, it just, it just said to fail. It just fell not to succeed, not to go on properly. Do you know that there are marriages this day that they don't, they don't longer saying so death do us part, meaning we're not going to stay this marriage until we die anymore. Some people are literally saying we'll stay this marriage until, until, until the death of the love, until the death of the pleasure. I've seen people who told me that, well, I'm still in my wife because I'm still having fun. And the day I will no longer have fun, I will come out of the relationship and find another happiness. But God created marriage that a man and a woman, they should become one. They can't be separate anymore. The Bible says the two shall become one flesh. If they become one flesh, you're going to cut it. They can't be separated anymore. But somehow, many marriages are, end, are ending up in divorce. And why and why? As I'm thinking as a minister of the gospel, to find solution to the problem of the congregation that will come before me, the congregation that will have problems and, and to, to, to share the word of God with them and to prepare them and to, to help them fix their problem, I begin to dig into this issue of marriage and, and, I, and God has helped me to discover some stuff that I'm talking to you about. Like I'm saying, I'm preaching a series of, of sermons on marriages and you need to come and, and watch all of them and, and whichever I preach to listen to it to see the flow of how God can help you to know that the institution that God has made is not meant for failure. It's meant for to succeed but we, the, 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 the people that are in the marriage, we humans who are in marriage, we are the one making it to fail. Hallelujah. Marriage 101, a man and his wife. That's the title. In verse 24 that we read together, let's read it again to, ref to refresh our mind. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife. A man and his wife. A man shall leave his father and mother and join to his wife. Like I'm saying, marriages are failing so much. People begin to wonder, how come this thing that God has made, God wants man, a man to marry a woman. Jealousy, chapter 2 already, God talk about marriage. How come is it failing? Is he going to do it wrong? I can tell you right now, no. Like I said, the title of this message is A Man and His Wife. So the question is, the people getting married, is it a man and is it his wife? You say, whoa, preacher, what are you talking about? Is it a man? First of all, that remove out of the equation that two women getting married together that remove out of the equation two men, two heavy men, like a preacher said, getting married to each other. That removed that out of the equation. The marriage that God has instituted, the institution of marriage created by God, he said it's gonna be a man and it's gonna be a woman. So let's forget about two women getting married together and find a way to justify them that it can be biblical, it can be acceptable because that's an abomination before God. God created a man and a woman. Man and female, male and female, God created him, say the Bible in Genesis. The Bible say a man shall leave his mother and father. The mother and father too, they are not two fathers, they are not two mothers. The man is leaving father, his father and his mother. So let's forget about what a society is corrupting the church. And we are tempted to say, well, if two women like each other, well, God gonna allow that. God does not create that. That's human. That's devilish. A man shall leave his father and mother 
it shall be done to his wife. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that God want a man and a woman to be together. God, a man and his wife. I will, I will explain in a minute what both of them means. God want a man, not a boy. God want a wife, not a girl, to join together in marriage. You say, oh, preacher, what are you talking about? Young, young people don't get married. Oh, there is an age requirement. They have to be 18. They have to be 21, depending on the state or the country, to be married. Young children, 10 years old, don't get married. They are, they are men, they are women when they get married. I'm not talking about the age of the two people. I'm not talking about if the woman has some breasts and if she has her period and if she thinks she's mature enough or she get a job, she can get a job and she can leave her, her parent. I'm not talking about a man that he said, well, I, I have my, my, excuse the expression, I have my, my, my body things that can, that, that make me a man. I have beers and, and I'm a man. I'm not talking about that. God is talking about a man and his wife. What does a man mean? You might ask. Hallelujah. What does a man mean? God want a man to be married, not a boy. What, what is this? What makes the difference? It's a maturity level. It's a responsibility level. The accountability level. You are getting married, or you got married, and the marriage is not working, and you begin to wonder if the, the institution of God is good. This marriage is hard, man. The marriage has failed. No, the marriage didn't fail. You fell in the marriage, and you caused the marriage to fail. God say, a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife. I will explain all that. A man is not a boy. What is the difference between a man and a boy? A boy is anybody, you can be 30 years old, you can be 50 years old. A boy is somebody who does not depart from mother and father. Meaning what? The person has not acquired enough knowledge, has not acquired enough uh, uh, independence to leave the father and mother. What does that mean? A father and mother, they provide information. They feed you. They help you. If you don't know what to do, you go to them. They tell you what to do. Do it like that. Do it like that. They guided you through your life. Who, who should marry is the somebody who can leave their father and their mother. The same goes to the woman too, to the wife. So a boy is somebody who depends again on, on other people. He's not responsible enough to analyze things for himself. To, to, to think and to decide properly, to, to consider all the elements before deciding. A boy, a boy, a boy is somebody, he just, he just look at things and say, well, this is what I want to do. And he does it without analyzing. A man is different from a boy by his maturity level. A man is grown, not physically. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about somebody who think better. Somebody who responsible. Not somebody who say, I'm responsible. I'll mess things up and I'm responsible. No, no, no. I'm talking about somebody to prevent the trouble from happening. I'm talking about somebody to analyze that, hey, this money, we need to know how to spend the money. I, don't, I, don't, I need to know how to talk to my wife. I need to know how to treat my husband and all that. The two people, I'm talking about the man and the woman, they need to know both of them in maturity. They need to be responsible. They need to be accountable. They need to have enough knowledge before they get married. You just get married because you are 20 years old. Well, oh, I'm 25. I'm ready to get married. Oh, I'm 25. I need to get married. I'm a woman. I need to have kids before it's too late. Do you get married? How about the knowledge? How about the responsibility? If you are not a man and you are not a wife and you get married, you mess up. Let me stay on the man on the man for a while. Like I'm saying, the difference between a man and a boy is that the man is independent, he's responsible, he's accountable, mature, he's ready to play his God-given role in the marriage. He's ready to play his role in the marriage. Oh, that's that, that be so many people right there. Some people are in the church, 
They think, oh, I'm a man, I need to get married. But they're not ready to play the role of a man the way God described it. If they get into their marriage, or when they get into their marriage. That's not a man, that's a boy. Wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, said the Bible. If you're not ready to do things the way God wanted, you're not a man, you're a boy. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You say, well, I don't believe in that. I can do it like that. The Bible says it like that, but in our society, we don't do it like that. You're not a man, you're a boy. When you get married, your mother will fail. And you blame it on God. You say, well, why God allow me to get into it? Why, why God didn't help me? You start crying and all that. A man is somebody responsible. Somebody who acquire enough knowledge about relationship, about everything. Somebody who know how to manage money, manage his own emotions. Somebody who know how to play his God-given role. What does that mean? Somebody who is ready to lead a woman. A man is someone who know how to lead a woman. Not somebody, everything you say, yeah, hey wife, how do we do it? Hey, yeah, whatever you want to do, do it. You don't have any say. You don't analyze anything. Or you just play video game in the house like a boy. You, you don't know what's going on, the way the money is managed, what to change in the house, how to how to lead your, your child, how to guide your children, how to tell them what to do, what not to do. You don't know. You are a boy. A man is a responsible person who is ready to play God-given role. His God-given role of leading a woman and leading a family and be the head of the household. That's who a man is. Do you fear God? Do you have the knowledge to think for yourself? You have to be leading the, the, the house now. Your wife and the children, you have to be the head. You have to be like, okay, we're not going to do this anymore. We have to do this. We have to spend money like this. We can't spend money like this. You are the head of the household when you get married. Do you have that? You see, many people will blame marriages, but what went into the marriage? Who are you who got into the marriage? Maybe you are a boy. You say, ah, I can't do that. The Bible said that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't want to do that. So don't get married. You get married and the man you fail. And you spoil the name of God. So a man and his wife. Like I'm saying, let me summarize it. A man is not a boy. And we're not talking about age. We're talking about a man is independent. He's responsible, he's accountable, he's mature, he's ready to play his God-given role to cooperate with, with his wife and to lead in the wife. Yes, God said the, the man is the head of the household. Yeah, God said that. God said you are the head of the household. You have to know how to lead your woman. I don't know how that, you know, you have to be able to lead. If you can't, then you are not doing it God's way. You are not the man that God is talking about. You see, we have to go back to the Bible and see what did the Bible say and who we are. Do we fit into what the Bible said? The Bible said, man, and we are boy and we are getting married. Or we are getting married because ah, it's time, I, I, grow, I, I grow up and I have the age, I got to have children and I get married to our children. It doesn't go like that. We're talking about God now. So a man is responsible. He, he, he will play his God-given role to lead a woman, to cooperate with his wife and to lead a woman. Now let's talk about the woman. What is his wife? Remember I said his wife, I didn't say uh, a woman. A wife. First of all, a wife is not a girl. A girl is just like the boy. He depends on the parent. He don't know what to do. He make crazy mistake. He's not responsible. I mess it up. My father will pay. Uh, he's just neglectful. But a woman, let me explain a woman first. A woman has the similar responsibility like a man. A woman 
how to be responsible, how to be accountable, how to mature, ready to play their role, how to be independent, how to cooperate with her husband. And that's a woman. A woman is somebody grown. No, that's the yeah, My husband will lead everything. I'm just going there. My husband will be the head of the household. No, no, no. You need to be a cool knowledge too. If you don't have knowledge, the marriage will fail. You, you both will be in the marriage. If your husband will leave, you need to know what is happening too. Your husband cannot lead everything. You will be taking care of your children. You will be managing yourself. You have to be able to cooperate with the person. You will be like partners. Everybody playing their role. You have to know how to play your role. Don't be a girl. You are unstable. You are very emotional. You don't like. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you want. You want this today. You want that tomorrow. That's that's a girl. You are very emotional. You are confused. You don't know what you want. You want everybody to please you. You want to make a mistake. You want everybody to forgive you. But when other people make mistakes, you don't forgive them. You just confuse. You can't cooperate with anybody. That's a girl. That's not a woman. A woman is that mature female gender who is responsible, who know that, hey, I can't just leave anyhow, make a mess anyhow, and want my man to fix it. I have to be accountable. I have to try not to make a mistake, not to make it and say, yeah, it's his job to fix it. You are mature. You bring in a, a, a positive element to the relationship. That's a woman. Now, what is the difference between a woman and a, and, and a wife? Hallelujah. Remember the title of the message, A Man and His Wife. The woman has two roles here. She has to be a woman first, not a girl. But you can be a woman, but you are not ready to be married. Why? Because you can be a woman, you are independent, you, 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 you have knowledge, you are responsible, accountable, mature, and all that. But then you get stuck up. Hallelujah. You want to turn the marriage into a competition. Because God said the man is the head of the household. Now you the woman, you have to play your role. You can also try to be the head of the household. Now you have to be his wife. A man shall leave his father and mother joined to his wife, his wife, his wife. What does that mean? With your knowledge, with your capacity, everything you are, you are not a girl, you are a mature woman, you are a responsible woman, you take all your knowledge and you have to submit it to the man. What does that mean? Does that mean you should be a walkover? No. What does that mean? You have to trim your life to in your cooperation with the man. Hallelujah. You can get into the marriage and want to dominate the man because God put him the head of the household. You have to be his wife. Meaning, you have to be working with him. You are a helpmate. The helper, when I hire somebody to help me in the shop, or to be working in my office, the person doesn't come and do everything. No. The person doesn't come and do most of it. A help. The percentage of a help is like 25%, 30%, 40%, even 50%. You become a partner. You see what I mean? You are a helper to the man. God created a man and gave him a vision. You come in the scene to help him, not to do everything for him. The moment you are ready to trim your life, your knowledge, to walk with the man, with the man in the head, you become a wife. My goodness, my goodness. A wife is not somebody you put a ring on. That's not what a man is, a, a wife is. A wife is somebody, somebody that trim herself, that trim her personality to walk with you, the man, with you, the man being, being in charge. A woman, a, a wife, is somebody you treat yourself to give the place to the man. Remember, you are playing your God-given role into the marriage. 
which is you are walking under the bed. Again, I'm not saying this is oppressive. I'm not saying to be submitted, to walk under the man, meaning you can't talk. That's not what it means. But it means you don't come into the house to want to be the one leading the couple. That's not godly. God said the woman should be submitted. And we make submission to sound so horrible. That doesn't mean you cannot talk. That doesn't mean you cannot help in the family. You help him. But if the man said no, he said no. Hallelujah, somebody. But God is the one who said it. Yeah, I'm not the one who said it. You don't follow society. Say, well, I, that doesn't work for me. I can't submit to any man. Or you say your husband is crazy. Why do you marry him? If he's crazy, you don't want to solve me. Why do you marry him? It's you who marry him. Exactly. So a man and a woman. A, a man and his wife, excuse me. So the woman, it has to be a woman first. Responsible, a grown person, not the age. We're talking about maturity, knowledge, responsibility. Who is somebody who's ready to play the God-given role to cooperate with her husband and to submit to him and to help him, not hurt him. I'm gonna preach a message title. Are you a helpmate or a hurtmate? Are you helping or you are hurting? Your role is to help, not to hurt. So God created a man who had to be responsible, accountable, mature. And he had to play his God-given role to lead a woman, or to play his God-given role to cooperate with a woman. The woman, the wife had to be a woman. She had knowledge, she's not a girl. And she had to play her God-given role to cooperate with the man and to submit to the man and to be a help to the man. Not to come and want to turn everything upside down. Look at Adam and Eve. Eve came to hurt Adam. It's true. I don't have anything against women. But Eve came to hurt Adam. Adam was in the garden. Adam was, has never thought about touching the fruit. But when Eve came, Eve started speaking to the snake. The Bible never told us that Adam was speaking to the snake. No. We never see in the Bible that Adam was speaking to the snake. Eve came to the scene. The snake started speaking to her. She didn't say, hey, wait a minute now, snake. You talk? I never see Adam talk to you. Adam has been here before me. No. Eve spoke with the snake. And Eve didn't say, hey, Adam. The snake is saying something here. What do you what do you think? I know you told me we shouldn't eat that fruit, but the snake is saying something here. Eve step out to mess up Adam. That's why when God came, Adam said, What? The woman he gave me gave it to me. So Adam and Eve they fell in their responsibility. But look at Joseph and Mary. Joseph and Mary. When Mary was pregnant with the Holy Ghost. God spoke to Joseph. And Joseph, the Bible said Joseph took Mary and they went to Egypt. The Bible didn't say Joseph. Joseph discussed with Mary if she want to go to Egypt or she want to go to Algeria or she want to go to Syria. We didn't say that. The Bible said Joseph took Mary. They were not even married. Because Joseph was playing his role, his God-given role of leading a woman and the woman was playing her God-given role to cooperate with the man and to be submitted to the man. And the Bible never said, Mary said she wasn't going there. Uh, uh, the Bible never even told us that Joseph told Mary about his dream. The Bible didn't even say that. That when Mary, when Joseph wake up, Joseph discussed with Mary, Mary, I had this dream. The angel said, we should go here. No, the Bible just said, Joseph took Mary and they went to Egypt according to how God guided Guided Joseph in the dream, but the one it wasn't an argument. They were be like, "Hey, I can't go like that." Hey, no, 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 don't say that. He there wasn't all that. So Joseph played his role of a man, and Mary played her role of a, a woman, of a wife. Although she wasn't married at that time, that's one thing too. You have to see the behavior in the person before you marry them. When you are dating, you're not seeing the God-given role of a man in him. You're not seeing the God-given role of a, wo a woman, of a wife in her. Don't marry her. 
Because you continue like that. I'm saying Adam and Eve, they mess up the rules. God created Adam first. Adam never touched any fruit. Adam never spoke to the snake. Eve came to the scene. Snake was speaking to him. Eve didn't say, hey, Adam. Why is the snake speaking to me? I never see you speak to the snake before. And when the snake suggested that Eve eat the fruit, Eve didn't say, hey, Adam, you've been here before me. You know, can we eat this thing? The Bible just said Eve took it and ate it. And she even gave it to the man. And the man didn't say no either. And I mean, even fell in the role. But God wanted a man and his wife to play the right role. Hallelujah. That's all the message I have for you today. For marriage to succeed, it got to be between a man and his wife. The man, it's not a boy. It's not just a physical maturity. I'm grown. I'm able to... to to impregnate a woman, so I want to get married. No, you have to be mature, responsible, and be able to play your God given role to lead the wife, to cooperate with the wife, and lead the woman, not to oppress her now, not to oppress her and be like, Yeah, I'm the man. No, you have to love her, cooperate with her, and be able to lead her. She is part of you, she's there to help you, not to hurt you. And the woman, too, have. The, the wife had to be a, a woman first, responsible, not a girl. The man cannot be a boy, he had to be a man. The woman had to be responsible, and she had to play her God-given role to cooperate with the husband and to submit to him. So what kind of marriage do you have? All it takes for the marriage to fail is for one of you to be a boy or a girl. It's much worse if two of you are just a boy and a girl in the marriage. Again, with the definition I gave you, not the age. Not to say, oh, I'm 30 years old. I'm a, I'm a woman. I'm 25 years old. I'm a man or whatever. No. We're talking about the maturity. You are responsible, accountable. You have the knowledge. You don't just jump into the marriage. You don't know anything about women. You don't know how to handle women. You don't know how to control your emotions or whatever. Both of you. So God wants a man and a woman. A God and a, his wife. Again, I'm, I, I told you that the difference between a woman and his wife. The woman is somebody who has the knowledge and all that. But his wife. Remember, the Bible said a man and his wife. The woman had to trim herself to feed the man. That's how the marriage is going to work. Hallelujah. So are you wondering why marriages don't work? Because most people don't marry as a man and his wife. Either they marry as a man and a woman, or as a man and a girl, or as a boy and a woman, or as a boy and his wife, and it doesn't work. We need to do things God's way so the marriage can work. Are you a boy? Through the definition I gave you, are you a woman? Through the definition I gave you, or are you a girl? And the marriage is not working. God can renew the strength in the marriage. God can renew the wine, the love, and everything will be all right. Let's pray. God instituted a marriage. And if the marriage is not working, let's trace our, 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 our path back, our steps backward, and see what is not going well. And I'm telling you here, God wanted a man to marry his wife. To be joined to his wife. Not a boy. But a man. Not a girl. Not a woman. But his wife. Let's ask God to help us. To be a wife. And to be a man. Not a boy. Hallelujah. Father we thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your knowledge revealed. We pray we recommend our marriages in your hand. We pray that your power step in and fix us up. When we have failed to know that we have to follow God, we have to do things your way for it to succeed. We have stepped in things on our own, doing things our own way and they are failing. We pray that you repair everything, make everything brand new so our marriages can be enjoyable. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. 
God bless you. You can share this with people, listen to it again, and come here and listen to other messages. Not just only in your marriage, but we have other messages in the same platform, either YouTube or whatever you get this sermon. Come back and you see some more messages. God bless you. Amen.